Hello again. Welcome back. Hi, hi. Hi, hi. Um, I miss you. Just saying. <laughs> I, I feel like every time we do this, it just gets harder and harder. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like using our normal equipment. I don't like our usual setup. I don't like that we didn't have videos to put up because now I have to put my sh fucking self together. We're a bra. Oh, we don't. Girl. Remember the last time we recorded, I was in boxers and a sweater, no bra. What's wrong with that? Exactly. I can't do that here. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Um, it goes for the authenticity, okay? Because we be real up in here. Real lopsided. Shush. <laughs> I mean, my hair's so wet. I just slapped makeup on so I didn't look like a dead rat. Like, I just got out of work and I don't even know what I did to my hair. It was just like really frizzy and I was like, Whoop. I was like, it looks cute. Because it's I got a nice little like wave going on. I got contacts in because I can't see my glasses fog up at work because we have to wear a mask now and I can't handle it. And I just realized that not only do I have bags, but I have wrinkles under my eyeballs stop don't poke yourself in the face with a pen um i did read that i i don't know what went with it but it was like if you put shaving cream on your eyeglasses they won't fog or something when you wear the masks like obviously shaving cream and then you wipe it off so there's some i would hope <laughs> that people understand that oh my I god think, i think there's there something shaving else cream is on. how do i see <laughs> oh my god I'll see if I can find. Anyway, uh, you ready? I'm ready. Ready? Wait. You ready? Let me remind people though about our social. Oh yes, of course. Because we have those on Facebook and Instagram mm -hmm. at Wham Six One Seven. You just put up a lovely song of the week post, and uh, I love it so much. Thank you. And uh, we have recaps going up at WickedAquaDot.com. When Amanda can. <laughs> so. Listen, bro. Okay. I'm supposed to do, sorry, this is like really bright. I'm supposed to do song of the week every Friday. I think yeah. I posted one on Tuesday <laughs> that was supposed to be for last Friday, but I did post yesterday's this morning. So there is. Listen, we have things to do okay we fucking try okay we, we can't try be the hardest we can't be like these other podcasters or and i shouldn't say other but like they're youtubers out there which just that's what they do they youtube for a living and i can't do that and neither can you nope so therefore we be at doing least, this <laughs> at least you get your you know your wicked awkward mass holes on wednesdays every week so we're consistent with something exactly <laughs> can we get to this now? Yes. Yes, we can. All right. Fuck, I didn't even think of my answer. Okay. If you became a witch, what would be the first spell you cast? Well, first. Like, no rules? No Like, rules. I can do anything? Anything. With repercussions, though? No, you're a witch. Okay, cool. Go ahead. I was going to say, I would inflict damage to people who deserve it so you're speaking of a one particular person well <laughs> Mina, yeah. you have a list no i got one person but um, i'm just saying like you know let's just give harvey weinstein or like people like that like just explosive diarrhea that's non-stop and you know make them suffer for a little while oh okay revenge <laughs> Well, right. no, 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 no. It's not revenge because he never do it. It's did getting what you thing. deserve. Avenge. I'd be an Avenger witch. There you go. <laughs> an avenging. I feel like there would be repercussions. Like I feel like the natural order of things wouldn't let you get away with that for too long. But I think I would. This is gonna sound so stupid. Go. I think I would extend my lifespan and those of my loved ones. At least by like, like I think I would slow the aging process and extend it to like another hundred years, just in case. Yeah, because no, you don't live forever. I don't want to live forever, 
But if I can get like two, three hundred years, I think I'd be okay with that. Yeah, because then at least you can be with the loved ones. You can yeah. see the world, you know? I feel like that also might be a bad idea. Why? Because I feel like in 300 years, you would understand how life works. And, like, you would be able to get your shit together by then. That you'd be yes. like, I don't want to. Uh-uh. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I, I, can, I can see that. That's a good one. That's a good here I am I just, thinking of, you know, making other people suffer. <laughs> you're mad today. <laughs> I'm wearing my Joker shirt for a reason, I guess. <laughs> I got nothing on. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I always think about that shit when I, whenever I see, like, vampire movies and stuff like that. Like, they don't technically live forever. They're just harder to kill. I think I'd like that. Yeah. I think I would, I would slow my aging. And it would, I would make myself and my loved ones, like, very difficult to die. Yeah. That'd be a good one. So, and when I say slow the aging process, I mean, like, it would take, like, 50 years or more just to look like you've aged one year. That's a good point. I think I would like that. Yeah. I okay. like that answer. It's a lot nicer than giving Harvey Weinstein explosive diarrhea. I think it's equally nice. (laughs) I'll heal people, too. I mean, damn. I'll get to that eventually. But first, y'all must pay. Yeah, exactly. I understand. I'm such a mean mean person. (laughs) That's not true. So what'd you do this week? I washed some shit. Yeah? Yeah, I did. Tell me about it. Well, I can't, because you're going to tell me what you watched. Oh, me go first? I mean, I go first. <laughs> me go first? Me go first? I want you to go first, because I really want to hear about this uh, Chris Evans movie. It oh, so well, good. I, I see the commercial on for Apple TV was, all the time. I was going to start with, I'll just do a really quick overview of what I did watch. So, um, when was this? 1995's Outbreak. I watched it, like, Sunday. That was 1995? Yeah, bro, don't fucking watch it. In the times that we're living right now, don't watch any pandemic fucking movies, okay? Why did you? I don't know. Because I was like, oh, man, I remember that one movie that was really old, and I watched it and I liked it. But now that I know better... What's wrong with you, in other words? I just I was like, whoa, those uh those makeup effects were really good. Yeah. Like, holy shit. Yeah. They actually 1995. Really dope. Yeah. Uh those of you that don't know, it stars with, and if you don't know who any of these actors are, go get yourself checked. Ooh. Uh Dustin Hoffman, Renee Russo, Morgan Freeman, Kevin Spacey, Cuba Gooden Jr. Whoa, 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 whoa. Patrick fucking Dempsey. What? With long hair and a dangly earring. What the fuck is this movie? Wait a second. You, you've you never watched Outbreak? No. Wait a minute. I was thinking of Pandemic. Oh, my God. That one on Netflix. I was like, no. wait, I there were a bunch of unknowns in that. No, bro. All right. So, basically, what that happens is... is crazy. No shit. So Dustin Hoffman works for the government, right? And him and his wife are in the middle of a separation, divorce type shit. Yeah. This monkey, I remember when I watched it, I was in high school and my teacher, we were all talking about Ebola and she's like, this is kind of like what happens. Like you start bleeding from everywhere and then you get all these big sores and then you die. So basically that's what this was. And it shows how like it was, um contracted through a monkey in africa and then some fucking idiot brought the monkey with them on a ship the monkey somehow ended up in a fucking pet store thank you patrick dempsey and then patrick dempsey died spoiler alert and i made it in this little tiny town where the monkey was like in the woods it's like a woodsy area and the whole town got infected and it was a fucking mess, but basically it was a, it's a good, um, there was a good conspiracy in there because the government had encountered this like back in like the sixties or seventies mm-hmm. and 
they had a cure for it, but instead decided to bomb the whole town in Africa, like the whole little village. Yeah. yeah to get rid of it. And they never spoke about it. So when it came around in the nineties with Dustin Hoffman, all of a sudden Morgan Freeman was like, here, I have this E1101 cure. Just give this to everybody. And all of a sudden people started getting better. And Dustin Hoffman was like, wait a second. Why did you have that? How did you know? And he uncovered the whole thing and he broke protocol and rank in the military. It was a fucking mess. Him and Cuba Gooden Jr. It was amazing. Wow. So like, maybe wait six months to watch it, <laughs> but definitely watch it. <laughs> oh my God. Just not right now, please. It's such, you just sit in there like. Monkeys. This is us right now. Yep. That's what's happening. So. Damn. Great shit. It's on Netflix if you really want to put yourself through that. Um, another thing I watched was season two of Legacies, which I know that you might not be aware, but it's a spinoff of the original, which is the spinoff of Vampire Diaries. It's awful. Oh, you're right. Yes. So I remember watching season one and I was like, oh God, like this is nothing like the first two series. Like there were definitely like that dramatic romance of vampires and wolves shit. But Legacy is, like, I feel like something was off. Like, there's something really cheesy about it. And during okay. season two, I realized that the cheesiness compared to persecute me if you want to. But Once Upon a Time is, like, cheesy. Oh, God, yeah. It's like that. Mm. Like, they have these monsters. And it's like, you know when Once Upon a Time uses CGI, it's not good? Mm-mm. Yeah. It's like that. So and you like, think it'd be good because it's a Disney, it's like an ABC show, so. Right. I mean, this they is the CW. It. This is the CW. No, Legacies, yeah. Yeah, so it's just, I mean, I watched it to continue because I'm like, all right, I already watched season one, but then it fucking leaves off in this, like, it's not a cliffhanger. It's kind of like a, what the fuck? Really? type of moment i don't know it's honestly i had a friend who was like legacies was dope and originals was great should i watch vampire diaries i was like bro you've got that backwards all wrong originals in the order i would watch it in because not you have to watch vampire diaries the original and legacies for the entire story to make sense but ranking wise the originals vampire diaries Maybe, like, 12 other things and then Legacies. <laughs> <laughs> because it's just, wow. it's, I watch it for, um, oh, fuck, what's his name? Matt something or other. He plays Alaric Saltzman. That's the only reason why I watch it. That's it. All right. I got um, I, no. yeah, it's not my shit, so. I know it's not. I would never push you to watch it. Um, if any of those, I would maybe recommend you watch the originals. I think that's a little... Because it's not... It doesn't have all the romance to it like Vampire Diaries does. It's a little darker. It's about a family of original vampires who settled in this town. And they're yeah. fucking ruthless and thousands of years old. And there's like a little bit of romance. But it's more about revenge and getting what you want i feel like that's a little more your tea that is my that is my tea <laughs> that is your dark tea that's my dark taste in tea <laughs> yes ma'am all right so let's move along so defending jacob i literally just saw the promo for it yesterday before i went into work downloaded there's three episodes all right hey, wait right. it's a show Yes, it's an, all right, this is what I was going to get. That's why I'm sorry. All right, so you can find it on Apple TV, Brand Spank and New, airs on Fridays. It's a limited series, eight episodes. Cool, you got it? Great. All right. It's based on a book by William Landy from 2012. Hmm. Um, I didn't find anything like comparing the book to the series, uh, but the plot and the summary of it seems to be coinciding with each other so it's basically a story about a father or family dealing with the accusation that their 14 year old son is a murderer so they find this kid in the woods stabbed to death um at first they think it's this local pedophile and then they find a fingerprint on the inside of a sweater does that make sense to you okay i thought see i thought i was the only one and it happens to be the son of the assistant district attorney who was on the case 
Now, take it back a little bit. Take it back. Right. Okay. So it's directed by Morton Tildum, who directed Jack Ryan. And the writer, which I was telling you, is Mark Boomback. And he wrote movies or wrote or was a co-writer, whatever, for movies like Live Free or Die Hard, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, and all the other Planet of the Apes ones, The Wolverine, Logan, The Mummy, uh, The Art of Racing in the Rain, Fifty Shades of Grey. This guy's all over the place. Insurgent. He did it for all of it. Damn. Yeah. So, um, this is where it gets really fun. It stars Chris Evans. Hmm. Who doesn't fucking know Chris Evans? This, <laughs> as far as I can tell, like, I was looking, and I was going through this with you, like, um, in his filmography. Obviously, we know that he did Fantastic Four, The Avengers, Captain America, and he's been in some comedy. I a lot of comedy action type of stuff. Yeah. This is probably the most serious thing I've ever seen him in. Now, this is also, keep in mind, I've never seen Snowpiercer or anything like that. Me neither. But he plays a dad. So I was like, whoa, Steve Rogers, where are you at? Like, what is this? <laughs> right? Um, his son in the movie is Jaden Martell, who plays Stuttering Bill in It Chapter 1 and It Chapter 2. So it's great, right? Because he's the one being accused of murder. All right. Okay. And they've done this thing where, first of all, can I just say, I don't know what Apple is doing, what equipment they're using, but I'm going to tell you right now, it is top-notch shit. Because at any moment, you can press pause and take a photo of that scene, and it would look like this beautiful like piece of artwork the lighting, the, the gradients, the color schemes, everything is just, and I've said this about C. Oh yeah. Remember me saying that? Mm -hmm. That it was just like beautiful, like cinematography type of stuff. It was just great. So, um, but they did this thing with Jaden where once he's been arrested, they darkened his eyes and the kid looks like a fucking psychopath. Really? He does. There's like, like you definitely fucking killed him. Um, <laughs> Georgie's death just drove him too far. <laughs> I think so. So, uh, Michelle Dockery is, looks like she was in Downton Abbey and The Gentleman. Never seen either. Um, porn stash is in it. Wait, have you seen Orange is the New Black? No. I don't know what else he's been. Do you have his <laughs> real name? Uh, yeah, I can't say it. Pablo... Schraber. Schrammer? Schraber. Don't know who it is. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Um, Does he have a porn stash? In the show, he did. That's why they called him Porn Stash. It was, and he was kind of a perv, but now he's like an attorney of some sort. I don't know. Um, Cherry Jones. Betty oh, Gabriel. Yeah. Yep. Betty Gabriel. Uh, Sakina Jaffrey. Mm hmm. J.K. Simmons is a reoccurring. Ooh, Paul well, Wesley. Man. Yeah. Um, I'm going to read. Oh, Kat Graham is in this? Kat Graham. Why she was I in the Vampire Diaries. Oh. She, if it's who I think it is, at least. Hold on. Let me click on this real quick. Yep. That's exactly who I thought it was. Um, Paul Wesley. Oh, shit. Whoa. What the fuck? I just realized. Sorry. I just realized I was talking about the Paul Wesley, not like some other. Oh, uh, what? Why do I know that Vampire name? Vampire Diaries. Ah. Uh, um. I was gonna say you watched in. this, right? <laughs> no, well, because I'm only like an episode and a half in. So the oh, only characters right. that yeah. are in here are Chris Evans and his little family and shit like that. Anyways, um, oh, cool. so yeah, eight episodes. Um. The book itself, I said it was written back in 2012. Um, the one thing that's interesting about this, not only does it start Chris Evans from Boston, Mass., but it also takes place in Newton, Mass. Love that. Love it. And I was going to tell you earlier, but I said, you know what, let me shut up and let me just save it for the episode. Nobody is botching the Boston accent. Really? No one. Because there's it's always, like, somebody who just... Some says, asshole, right? Yeah. It's, it's either 
they keep their real accents, whoever the actors are, or it's, you ever hear Chris Evans just speaking in conversations where it's like really subtle, but it's definitely there. Yep. It's like that across the board for everybody. Yeah. Remember, it's, didn't we watch that video of him with his brother on Jimmy? Yes. Allen? Yes. It was very particular things that he would say that you'd be like, oh my God, there it is. Like if they said garden, be like, I was a garden or something like that. It um, is very subtle. It's not as like pronounced as they It's make not it. like this motherfucker lives in the middle. It's not like that. It's just this very subtle, like it's definitely there, but it's not overdone. There's no overkill. I like um, that. It's really nice. Um, another thing, because obviously Chris Evans and it takes place in Newton, I was like, shit, well, <laughs> where did they film this? And I swear to God, if they had said Ontario, I was going to lose my damn mind. <laughs> Everything is filmed in fucking Ontario. Either that or Vancouver. Like geez, I know. It's Christ. fucking ridiculous. So filming took place back in 2019. Okay. In these towns. Newton, Mass. Cold Spring. UMass Amherst. Belmont. Salem, Mass. Walpole. Lowell, Mass. Near the Song of Serena. Uh, Medford. Worcester. It's Watertown. That's like um, all the hot spots, man. Watertown, Lemonster, and Needham. Jesus. That's it's, like the, each each of those towns is very different. Mm-hmm. Very well, different. so it takes place in Newton. Um and it looks like for the actual town of Newton. They went for Cold Springs, the Village of Newton Highlands, and UMass Amherst, Mount Ida campus. Um, I'm not sure what they did for Bel and in Belmont, but I know that Salem, Mass. is probably where they shot some of the court scenes. Oh, yeah. That's probably what it was. Um, MCI, Cedar Junction, and Walpole. Um, they nice. says here that they were in Lowell by UMass Lowell Songus Arena, but it, they didn't say like what exactly was filmed there. Um, let me see. Hold on. There's something else in here. Probably just like driving scenes or something. Probably Watertown, Mass, where the facade of the old Watertown police station will appear in the new and police station in the series. So okay. the new and police station in the series is actually the water, the old Watertown police station. And That's then there's, um, the town diner for Newton in the show was in Watertown. And then CNM Pizza and Lemonster, where they shot some scenes there. And then neighborhood scenes were filled in Needham, Mass. Huh. But it's nice because, like, even, okay, so we talked about um, previously about In the Dark. Or even shows like Supernatural, The Vampire Diaries. All those things are done in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. In Ontario. Everything's done in Canada. I don't know what it is if Canada has some kind of fucking special going on, but it all takes place up there. I'm I'm pretty sure it has to do with like they it it's less money. It costs less to film shit up there. I'm wondering if it's that and the fact that maybe there's just more like maybe Canada is just like you have all these options in one place. Because I remember when we went to Atlanta, remember that Uber driver was telling us how Atlanta is like the new Hollywood? Yep. Like everyone's going to Atlanta to film. Yep. Just because everything is so congested, congested in California and all these other places where you would want to. So I guess, like, I guess, but I still. Guess. Yeah. <laughs> Like, you could walk in any part of Canada and either be like, oh, my God, this looks like Boston. Oh, my God, this looks like Virginia. This looks like California. Like, yeah. Whatever. But I'm glad they actually kept it in mass. I like Right that. there. Exactly. I like that, too. And it's, you know, Chris Evans is from here, so it just, it, it's really nice. I don't it know. Works. It works. I found that, I found that very um, comforting. I don't know why, but I did. They're keeping it real, or at least they're trying to. At least. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so if you wiki it, it'll give you like a couple things or whatever. But that was what I was most interested about. It looks like they're trying to keep along with um, the novel. They're not trying to divert too much away from it. Um, I want to read it. I know, right? So 
I have to say that I don't know. You never saw C, right? No. You never saw it? Apple TV shows are just, they're just so beautifully done. I don't know how else to explain it. It's just, it's, it's honestly breathtaking. Like one of my favorite things about C was the fact that, you know, whenever it's, I don't know if it was the angles, like I said, or just like the, the equipment that they're using, if it's like top notch or something, but it is just such clear, it's like a clear softness. It's almost like satin. I don't know how to describe it. It's just, I don't know. Okay. It just, and this show, it's very much on like the darker gray type of wash. Oh, I you love know, those it, dark gray washes. It, it takes place um, at a time of year where it's, it doesn't, like I'm fucking there. Like it doesn't feel cold, but just like the tone of the episode so far and just looking at what they're wearing, it looks like it's that like maybe fall rainy season which is insane because a lot of the filming took place in the, in the summer. It's all about that equipment, baby. Movie magic. Yeah. April of 2019, June of 2019, July of 2019. And everyone knows that June and July, August, it's a hot fucking hot. humid mess. Mm -hmm. So for them to be able to film it in a way that it just looks like that really cold and dreary. Like today. Yeah, that's pretty much what it looks like throughout the, and it's just like, oh, it's so good. And I'm only an episode and a half in, so. That's high praise. Y'all need to get on that shit. Do you have my Apple TV account? I was just going to ask you. I don't, but okay. I have the app on my laptop. So. Okay, so it is Jamaris. <laughs> just kidding. All right, I'm going to get it I was like, why'd you stop? <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> I'll give it to you. Thanks. I will. But um, that's what I did this week, and that's what I'm doing over the weekend. So hopefully um, you and I will already have watched. There's three episodes now. One releases on Friday. So hopefully by Saturday we'll be four episodes caught up, and we can discuss further. Nice. I, um, I have to say I appreciate limited slash miniseries a lot more than – dragging it out for multiple seasons um yeah <laughs> yeah Pit case in point yes so i'm kind of glad that it's just a limited series because yeah they can tell the story and then be done and not throw in filler shit are you cool with like eight episodes series though like as long as the story is told yeah between eight and ten well, i think is a good medium I remember when Sons wrapped, um, Kurt had said that he wanted to do the Mayan series, but he also wanted to do a mini series with John Teller. And he said it would take over a span of like maybe two to three seasons. Mm -hmm. I don't hate that either. Or the yeah. thought of that, I should say. Who knows what's going to happen now? And um, like another case in point is uh, like Chernobyl on HBO. Like they oh, yeah. told the story and then they got out of there. You know what I mean? Yeah. It didn't stretch for stupid reasons you know i feel like because the outsider which regrettably i didn't even finish it you know um but i feel like heftier books rather than doing a movie i like the fact that a lot of them are taking that mini series route yeah because i feel like like i'm not saying that the outsider actually work i don't think i have it on me no, I, I do have one behind me somewhere. So The Outsider, it's not like a big book, but no. I'm it's trying to there. read from here. I'm like, is it in there somewhere? It's, it's way up there. Right here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's like a normal sized <laughs> book. But even a three hundred page book deserves more than two hours of screen time. I feel like sometimes a lot of shit gets lost. You know what I mean? So I appreciate this. I feel like they're going to really get a lot of the small details that the readers who did read the book enjoyed. It'll be in the series. So I'm, I'm excited to watch it and hopefully I can find time to read it. I was going to say, I like the premise. I mean, it sounds like something I wouldn't not enjoy, it's, but <laughs> no, it's definitely up your alley because not only is it Chris Evans plays 
all right so his name is andy barber right because I'm, I'm not going to go by chris evans because this is just for the series but in the book andy barber is an assistant district attorney who is assigned this case come to find out his 14 year old son is a suspect yeah it's a child murder it's another 14 year old kid so now you have to deal with the repercussions of like as a district attorney or assistant district attorney your kid is now on trial so you can't do anything for him you're now on the other side of the gavel yep right and your child is now dealing with being 14 years old he's looking at adult time not kid shit this is first degree murder he's also dealing with kids at school being bullies at 14 year old 14 years old how many secrets does a 14 year old hold a lot you know and it's just like the more i watch courtroom drama the more i realize that when you're up on the stand doesn't matter what side of the stand you're on it's literally a competition of who can bash who the most that's all it is who can shed the worst light on who and it's like all your bullshit comes out and right before you called i left off and um andy barber was just telling his wife and son i have to tell you something and she's like oh is it about jacob and he goes no it's about me and my family it's gonna come out in court because he knows that the defense is I think it's a defense, whoever, is going to look into their background, pick up all the dirty shit that was there, and bring it to light. Wow. So I think, oh, I love it. I hate it, but I love it. I think it's going to be really that. good. I Me love too. those situations. <laughs> I know. It's fucking nuts. But I'll send you my login as soon as we're done here. Please do, because uh, I, ever since I saw that Apple TV commercial, my like, Chris Evans in a drama, I need Yeah, to, and he I, plays a dad. Like, come on. I know. know. <laughs> Pretty much. How do you go from Captain America to dad? It's weird, right? Oh. Because think about when you first started watching Robert De Niro. Yeah. Right? He was an older gentleman. Then he went to, he's a father. Now you see him in movies where it's like him and Zac Efron, and he's the grandpa. <laughs> Poor De Niro. <laughs> like, that's how you know you're getting old. So now Chris yeah. Evan is in, like, dad mode. Next thing you know, he's going to be grandpa. Yo, no. <laughs> I first saw Chris Evans in Not Another Teen Movie. So the fact that he, yes. So the fact that he, like, is now a household name is just like, oh. I saw him in Cellular. That was the first movie I ever saw him in. Love the it. second one I ever saw him in was, um, I just saw it. Hold on. I forget what the, I think it was Push. Yeah, while you while you look that up, let me just say, Cellular is a solid movie. <laughs> I feel like it's really like people it's, bash it. I know, right? but it's adrenaline pumping. But you have Chris Evans, fucking Jason Statham. What's his face? Which um, I forget about all the time. William H Macy, and Kim Basinger, who is a uh, Batman. And not to mention in Batman fame, Nokia phones. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, oh. for Broncos, so yeah, oh. Oh. and Chris yeah, Evans in a in a t-shirt running around the whole time, and he's tan as shit. It's good. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's so good funny. One. It is a good movie. I think it's uh, very underestimated. But yeah, I saw him in in Cellular, and then oh, I literally bullshit. had the, the next- DVD over there. I the next thing I saw him in was the Fantastic Four. Yep. Um, I don't remember him in TMNT. I never saw those, so I don't know. Is this like the... No, this is a computer animated series. Oh, he's in the, like, the show? He's like, he's a voice cast. Let me see, who does he cast? Oh, he casts Casey Jones. I was going to say, because in the newer TMNTs, it's Stephen Amell that plays Casey Jones, and he's only in the second one. So weird. I'm sorry. Why? <laughs> Why? I don't know. Just those and I'll bet you it fucking got filmed in Vancouver, too. <laughs> All fucking places. They just stole the Arrow set. Like, who cares? They probably fucking did. You're absolutely right. Uh, no, but, um... Chris Evans is where I, I always forget that he was in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World as Lucas oh, yeah. Lee. <laughs> I love that. Okay, skateboarding with the 
with the with the fucking lineup and shit. Oh, yeah, man. Oh my god. He's Puncture. Good. Have you seen the losers? No, but I heard it was bad, so I didn't. Yeah, he's not really known for making great movies until he started doing like the Captain America and Avenger movies. Yep. Yeah, I don't really. <sighs> he's a good doobie. Gifted? I've never seen that either. I've I've seen on Netflix the most recent one is uh the Red Sea Diving Resort. Can you remind me what that is? Um ugh. it sounds so familiar, but oh wow. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's... I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, uh, let me see. It's a spy thriller film. There you go. It's your type of That's shit. That's all I need to know. Uh, stars Chris Evan as an Israeli Mossad agent who runs a covert operation that helps Ethiopian Jewish refuge- fuck, refugees escape to safe haven in Israel. So Michael Kenneth William is in it. Yeah, he was on Boardwalk Empire and The Wire. Haley Bennett, which is the girl from Swallow. Yep. Uh, I don't know who that is. I'm trying to look for this fucker. This fucker. She's so... Michelle Huseman. The dude. Chris Chalk. I don't know who that is. All right. That's enough. But anyway. That's enough. Ben Kingsley. There we go. Ah, yes. I love him. No, uh, oh, and Greg Kinnear. Greg Kinnear. You mean it's Kinnear. Uh, Kinnear. Ben Kingsley. Okay. Dude's yeah, yeah, been knighted. Yeah. Anyways, let's get into, uh, so go watch, I almost said Snowpiercer, <laughs> Defending Jacob on Apple TV if you have it, if you don't, get on that shit. Now, back to you, Amanda. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> so, what I watched this week, unintentionally, was the scribe and I watched on Netflix, Cargo, which is a movie with Martin Freeman, um, and I love Martin Freeman, and I've always mm-hmm. seen that movie pop up on my Netflix, but I've never watched it. Isn't that weird when that happens? Yes. But now Netflix, I don't know if it's recent that they're doing this, but they're kind of like putting up if it's been nominated or won awards. So that was kind of like our like precursor to just be like, okay, maybe this isn't as bad as other shit on Netflix. Okay. So I didn't know that they were doing that. Yeah. I don't know if it's just if you watch it on TV, it does it. I haven't noticed it in the app. Um, whatever. Oh, right. But so the movie, it's, I'm going to say it's a zombie flick, but it is far from like your typical zombie movie. Um, it's, it's kind of similar to the book of Eli. Have you ever seen that with Denzel? Yeah. Where it's, apocalyptic end of the world yeah and it's very people are alone like you don't really come across other people that often okay um or if you do you never trust them because you never know what they're harboring okay martin freeman and his wife have a daughter right and they live on a houseboat and they're well into the zombie outbreak but they live on the water, so they don't really see people. Okay. Getting low on food, so they savage anything they can find. And what's cool is he, they, he would fish out these, you know when, like, shit happens in the world, the government would drop, like... Care packages. Um, care packages or med kits, like, out of the sky. Yeah. So they were, like, little med kits, and it was, it, t- like, taught people about the outbreak. It came with like a pamphlet of, you know, symptoms, time framing. Cause I guess once you get bitten, you have 48 hours before you turn. Um, mm-hmm. so it comes with a little like stopwatch kind of that you wear to mark your two days. And it just goes through the whole like information and it comes with its own spike that you can use to like kill zombies with it. Okay then. So here's some information and a weapon. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Um, and there's, like, tons of those hanging around. And what I forgot to mention what, was that this takes place in Australia. So, thankfully, though, Martin Freeman retains his English accent, <laughs> not an Australian accent. 
Um, yeah, that'd be weird. Yeah. His wife in the movie is the Australian here. But anyway, so this is like well into it. The world knows that zombies are there. Um, he goes to savage a downed sailboat and he finds like food because they're running out. And they did this very well. There was like a closet type door that was rounded and it was shut. And then he does his things and then he thinks he hears a noise and it turns back to the closet and it's open like this much. And I'm like, okay, creepy. So you're like, all right, bitch, there's a zombie in there. Like, you know it. So he tries to leave very quietly. And he's like, yeah, that boat was safe. I got this food. I found some wine. Let's have a nice night. And the woman, his wife, she's like, oh, it's safe. I'm going to go back in there to see what he missed. So she goes back in there. Bitch gets bit. So now she has 48 hours. And that kind of preludes the whole movie where they have to leave their houseboat because they there's like a, in those kits was a map. There was this hospital. Go get help type of deal. Of course. They leave. But of course, I guess with this particular outbreak, if you get bit, you turn, excuse me, you turn quicker if you bleed out more. So if you get, you know, if you have a really big wound and you're bleeding a lot, the process goes quicker than you would. I wonder why that is. Do they explain why? Not really. Um, But you don't really need to. But it's very interesting because then this, like, your blood turns very um, slime-like. You're fine. Very, like, slime-like, gooey. So when it starts to, like, come out of your eyes and your nose, and that's, it's sort of like your insides are dying, pretty much. Yeah, that's and, how it looks like, but yeah. <laughs> but they have this, their daughter is, I mean, she can't, she can't even walk, so less than a year old. So you That see, dude is old, as, oh fuck, I'm sorry. You're good. He's, old, he's like old as shit, how is it that he's still, yeah, he's almost 50 years old. Martin Freeman? Wait. Yeah. Yeah. Listen. Wait, what is this movie from? Netflix? No, like, how old is it? Oh. Uh, last year or the year before? I think it's 18. 17. Or 17. And that motherfucker has a newborn baby? Yeah, listen. Okay. But it's such a sweet movie where it's not really about the we're running from zombies because they're slow. You wouldn't like it because they're the slow type, but they're very, like, twerky and twitchy. Oh, yeah, see? <laughs> no. um, but it's the same concept, you know, they need the human flesh. But it's all about protecting his daughter. And what happens is, on the way to the hospital, they crash because there was a zombie in the middle of the street, and he's like, oh, fuck. Of course. A tree pierces his wife. So, she, yeah. After being bitten? Yeah. Oh, that bitch is having a so, bad day. <laughs> yeah, I know. And that, because she was impaled, she was basically dying quicker. Oh, God. So, so the 48 hours didn't matter whatsoever. Right. So she turned, and in the tussle, they, like, tussled, and she bit him. So now he has 48 hours, but he's all alone with his toddler daughter. So the whole movie becomes about him trying to find somebody to leave his daughter with so that they can protect her. So it becomes very sad. Like, it's the saddest zombie movie I've ever seen, but it was, it's beautiful at the same time. Have you, have you seen that mini movie where it's the zombie apocalypse and mom's dead and dad had to figure something out with the baby that they had? So he puts the baby on his back and then he ties I forget. It's like a, it, it's almost like, you know how, like, keep going. You know how, like, when, this um, based on a short film, yeah, huh? this is based on a short film. It is. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, he like ties, it almost looks like one of those, like, it's a, it's a piece of, it's like a stick with something dangling from it. That's the exact short film that it's based on. It is. Yes. Because it the was whole- so fucking sad because dad turned, 
But yep. because he's so focused on getting the thing in front of him and he can't reach it, he just walks until someone finds him and the baby is like in his back sleeping. That's what it's based on. Because he carries his baby Rosie on his back in that in the kid thing, the whole movie. He he finds this guy and this woman. He's like, yes, oh my god, we're gonna we're gonna be fine. Leave, yeah. But it turns yeah. out the guy's a fucking asshole, and the girl is like there against her will. Oh. And he like keeps live uh, indigenous people in cages to entice the zombies as bait so that he can like Mm. kill the zombies and like raid their pockets for money or whatever it's bizarre anyway but he ends up befriending like the indigenous girl that was trapped and and it's a whole thing it's a whole thing but it's so well done and Mm. part of it is at the end when he does turn the indigenous girl to me is her name does put meat on the end of a stick and gets on his back with the baby and just dangles it in front and he just carries them to her people that is so strange i'm gonna have to find that mini film yeah, do you remember that, seeing that i don't but i know that this movie was based on that short film and it's martin freem is just amazing i love him it's, i always have and it's such um, a good movie i i definitely shed a tear or two so Aww. Take that for what it's worth. I can't think of anything like more terrifying. I listen. I think about that shit all the time, especially because of the kids. Yeah. Like if we were in the middle of a zombie apocalypse, we would die immediately because my children don't know how to shut the fuck up. <laughs> they don't. You tell they them really to be don't. quiet. <laughs> they tell them, "Okay, you have to be quiet." And Kira's like, "Okay, am I being quiet?" I'm like. Hey, look it. She's a talkative <laughs> little girl. No, I'm like you have to. I would. Uh, it's a great movie, though. I highly recommend it. I will definitely watch it. Is this it? Still a short film. That might not be it. No. I'm gonna. I'm gonna we'll see if it. I can find it, and then I will send it to you because I remember it's literally like. Maybe six minutes long. This film. Yep. Oh, oh. It's heartbreaking. So yeah, I, it it is heartbreaking though. But it's it's a like the most beautiful zombie flick I've ever. That's seen. such a Martin thing too. Oh, I know. I love him. He's such Sorry. a schmooshy, mooshy little thing. He is. He's so. Cute. <laughs> Are All your right. eyes glowing? <laughs> <laughs> I've loved Martin Freeman for a very long time. Okay. I'm like. You were talking about Martin Freeman, and I'm over here like, Martin Freeman. Oh, I know who that is. Okay. Yeah. You're, listen. I just oh. need a face. What? Um, Thor Ragnarok, right? He's yes. As yes. No, he's also Herman in Black Duke. Panther. He flies the thing. Oh, Black Panther. That's what I mean. God, they all run together. Um, and Andy Serkis is in that as like a baddie. Yeah, and I laugh every time because I'm like, "That's uh, Baggins, and that's fucking what's his name? Uh oh my god, what's his name in Lord of the Rings? G- um, what is that thing's name? G- g- oh, uh, Gollum. Gollum. Jesus. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Thank I'm like you. trying to help you out. I'm no. Like, oh, fuck. But I just downloaded IMBD, so it was telling me to, like, sign up. And I'm like, no, get out. Call him. Thank you. Jesus Christ. All I could see the whole time was, like, The Hobbit, because it was that. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, those guys are great. Love them. So. Is that all you watched? No. Okay. Last night. Started watching Waco on Netflix. I don't know what that is. No. Well, Daniela watched it, and she told me to watch it. Okay. And I wanted to watch it earlier this week, but I didn't have time. But the scribe and I watched it last night. And do you know the whole story about the whole Waco, Texas thing? No. What do you mean? Just like I didn't know about Chernobyl. Girl. Girl. I know, but he's kind of in that, like... He? Who's he? The dude in the center of it all, because this really happened in 1993. 
So the show Waco. Well, Waco. I know it's a real thing. I yeah. know that. I just don't know what it Do is. Do you know like the Unabomber? Does that name ring a bell? Yes, I, I've heard okay. of the Unabomber. It's kind of in that vein, all right? Okay. For those who are not familiar with what happened in Waco, Texas in the early 90s, there was a dude named David Koresh who was into, like, they called him a religious leader, and he had this big building where he had his, they call it a cult, because that's what it was, basically. Um, but he had a name for it, you know, they always do. Um, living we are in, not a cult. Yeah. But with no, families, no. like couples. Mm. And children. So I see like, that. And it, there was a lot, yeah. He had a sick mullet, so. I also Fire. see that. This isn't the fruit punch guy, is it? Who was that? The fruit punch? The Kool Aid. No, my God. No. That was. <laughs> the, you know, the Hawaiian punch guy? I'm like, that little cartoon character? <laughs> Goma needs to go to bed. Oh my uh, god. Fuck me. No. Uh, that was Jim Jones. I'm sorry. It just it looks very similar to the gathering. Hold on. It looks really similar to the gathering for um the Kool-Aid thing. Yeah, I got I'm sorry. you. No, it's not that. Okay. It's completely different, okay? I'm so sorry. Woo! Anyway. Uh, David Koresh was, like, this guy who had, I mean, he, like, memorized the Bible. This dude was, like, God everything, right? Mm -hmm. And, but he was, again, one of those charismatic leaders who could make anybody believe in his message. So that's, that's how he got all these people to live in this building in the, like, middle of fucking nowhere in Waco, Texas. And he, to the point that even though there were married couples there, he would say, okay, you're married, but you have to be celibate. And only I can have sex with your wife because I'm taking that burden away from you from sinning. And these dudes just went along with it. They, like, believed his message. So he oh fathered, God. like, fucking all these kids by all these different wives, even though they were already married and their husbands lived there with them and agreed to it. Gross. That's how fucked up that shit is. <gasps> Uh-oh. The dog's bowl of water just went fucking everywhere. It's okay. <laughs> I'll clean it after. <laughs> um, anywho, that's how animated I am about this show. Yeah. So basically, it's all about this, and I'll get into it in a second. Um, but it stars Taylor Kitsch as David Koresh. Do you know who that is? That sounds. Yes. He, uh, yeah. We it. just. I just saw it in. Um, Code Eight. Uh, American Assassin. Oh, American Assassin, what? not Code Eight. I'm sorry. Not yeah. Code Eight. Um, is that who but, that is? Yeah, the mullet. Yeah, that's him. Well, um, he lost weight for that, huh? Yeah, he had to be. He was happy. already a skinny motherfucker. So, but for anybody who likes Boardwalk Empire, there's like four people in there, and I died. It's uh, Michael Shannon, Paul Sparks, uh, Shay Wiggum, and this other dude that was on Boardwalk. I don't know his real name, but it stars Rory Culkin. Uh, of Scott Pilgrim versus the World fame. Are you serious right now? I love him. What? Can you hear the leaf blower? No? Okay, good. My dad's leaf blowing. I mean, there's shit going on over here. Oh, okay. I, uh, as long as you can't hear it. Um, oh, and John Leguizamo. How dare you it. leaf blow, Dad? I know. But it's John blowing. Leguizamo is in the show, too. And... Yeah. What is this with John Leguizamo popping up all of a sudden? I don't know, but I love bored? it. I love it. Uh, dude needs work, okay? Oh, Michael Shannon. Yeah, okay. Michael Sh He's that dude that you know the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in, um, he was in the Superman movie. He was the, the first one. I will find him guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah dude. He's the baddie. Anywho. Um, House Parts looks familiar. He's in a lot. So it's, he's in a lot of HBO stuff. He was in House of Cards on Netflix. That ain't it. He was a lot. He was in a lot. Anywho. So mm -hmm. but the whole thing is 
ATF gets involved with this building, right? Because they're like, this dude's got guns. He's leading a cult. So they go to like serve him a warrant, but end up fucking opening fire and killing like Koresh gets shot. A couple people, a couple uh, of his people get shot. So now he looks like a martyr. Right. Because a couple of the ATF guys were either wounded or killed because they returned fire. Right, um, right. Then the FBI gets involved because they're like, ATF, you fucked up. So FBI gets involved. And what happens is that they are in a standoff for 51 days, pretty much. And this is real life. Okay. So the show is just telling the story. Oh, this takes place in 93. I feel like that would not fly nowadays. It would not. Nope. This was definitely a (laughs) 90s thing. And what kills me, though, is that the ATF tries to raid them again. And the building ends up on fire. And everybody inside dies. All the women, all the kids, like, fucking everybody. And Koresh was shot in the head. They don't know if he killed himself or if one of his, like, followers killed him. Um, But it was, like, a whole thing. And because it was televised, there was a cameraman there. What a fucking mess. Yeah, it was a hot mess. So there is footage. If you go online, you can search for it. And it shows, like, the whole raid from ATF on this building. And then when it starts being on fire and shit, and they just... Let the people die, pretty much. How is ATF still an organization after this? It goes into it. Um, now, I is this... Follow. Okay, this is like... I'm only episode. three episodes in right now. I wonder if um, they'll do a... Because this is 2018. I wonder if they'll actually do a documentary on this. There's a lot of docs on it. Is it? Is there? Sorry. Yeah. Is, I wonder if there's anything on Netflix, though. Oh, That's it doesn't look point. like... It looks like it's the only thing. But it Oh, speaking of the, about the Unabomber, there's, like, two of them here. We started to watch that, and then we're like, you know what? Fill in the Waco more. Right. Just, and John Leguizamo's character is part of ATF, but he moves in across the street and, quote-unquote, infiltrates them, but he, like, introduces himself as a rancher to get in there to see what it looks like. I and see. they knew. Like, they found out that he was with ATF. And they just kicked him out. I mean, they didn't harm him. But they knew that all these ATF guys were coming to raid them. And John well, yeah, was- because what a fucking coincidence that at a time that we're being looked at, all of a sudden you want to join. Right. But it wasn't really about that. But they, they knew. They did know. But okay. John Leguizamo goes back and they're like, you need to call off the raid because they know you're coming. Holy like, they shit. know because the mail guy, the mailman was coming down the road and sees a camera guy. And the camera guy is like, I need to find this, like, Mar- Mount Carmel place. Do you know where it is? And that's the building with Koresh and all of his people. Little did they know that the mail guy was a son. And his dad was in the place with David Koresh. So he knew all about them and was, like, on their side. And then he just sees this, like, truckload of ATF agents going up the road. So he's the one who, like, went to David Crush was like, hey, ATF is coming. Yeah. Fucker. So, yeah. But poor uh, John Leguizamo was like, you need to stop. But they didn't. They went on with it. People died. It was she, a bad thing. Nobody said, so what about the son that was a mailman? Did he die? No. His dad did. Unfortunately, he was shot. But it was just crazy because this. I again, I haven't finished it, but I. It's not like they're going to go against history here. Uh, <laughs> no, right. I, I just, hear you. The fact that it really happened is just fucking crazy. Um, that they just like let everybody die inside. That it, they're so messy. And even the guys in the compound, I'll call it. But they were like, dude, like stop firing. There's women and children here. Like. Did ATF not know? No, they knew. Oh, they just, okay. They did it anyway. But well, it, fuck you. Like, they were just serving him a warrant, though. Like, fuck why you they, very much. Yeah. 
oh, oh, and what kills me is when this whole thing started, this poor dad was out, right? And he comes back and all these cops are here. He's like, my kid and wife are in there. And they're like, nah, you got to turn around. You can't come here. So he walks onto the property from a different area to like yeah. break in. ATF sees him and they just kill him. Of course. I was like, what? Did the they f- have those orders or do we not see the story from the ATF side? No, we do. We do. We see it from both sides. Oh, okay. So did they have orders for like, as soon as you see anybody, you shoot and kill? <laughs> see, this is it why dirty. I, I could never be a soldier. Me fucking. Because I me. can't, I can't do that. In good conscience, I can't just kill somebody just because they might pose a threat. Right. And that dude wasn't. Like, he was just trying to see his wife and kid, for God's sakes. He didn't have but a But at the same time, how the fuck do you know? I know, but still. That happens, um, <clears throat> this is so, like, not even closely relevant to this, but it just came to mind. So, when I played The Last of Us, one of the opening scenes, like, the opening story is, like, the beginning of how everything started. and. Joel, who's the main character, had his, she must have been 13, his 13-year-old daughter um, had hurt herself. She, like, her leg was, I think, broken. Mm-hmm. And they're running away from the disaster and the zombie shit horde that's happening. And they encounter a soldier. And the soldier gets on the, he has a gun up to the dad and the daughter. And he's like, please, she's hurt. Like, we're not infected. She's just, her leg is hurt, blah, blah, blah. And the soldier is like waiting on commands, and they're like, "Oh, just shoot and kill them both." And he's like, "But sir, there's a child." He goes, "Shoot and kill them both." Wow. So yeah. I understand where it's something like, "Okay, you might be infected. You could kill us all." But it's like, "Oh, that that whole Waco thing would never fly now." Nope. Nope. And they that do. Be- I mean, they definitely show it from the government's side. And it was how they approached it. Right. And it was the guy in commands. I say command, but he was just the leader of the ATF team and how it was basically his call. And he's the one that like fucked it all. Yeah. He's the one. That motherfucker must have had, he must have had a bad day and a big dick to whip because what the fuck? (laughs) A big (laughs) big dick to whip. I love it. Yeah. He just wanted to whip that shit out. That's what it was. That's why it was such a big deal, was because of how fucked up it was. Because of his big dick. Mm-hmm. See? Got it. Fucking asshole. Big dick problems. Yeah. <laughs> to it's a whole it. other level. <laughs> but the show is really well done, and I love it so far. So, I added it to my list. How many episodes added. is it? It's only six episodes. Yeah. And at like an hour-ish long each, so. <laughs> Bang that out on the weekend. Yep. I work a 16-hour shift next Saturday. I'm ready for this. Ew. Girl, don't even talk about it. I don't want to because uh, I can't talk. <laughs> um, so so um, is that all you watched? Yes. Okay. So I also heard that Extraction starring Chris Hemsworth. Yes. I heard that was dope as Fuck. That just came out, didn't it? Because I just uh, saw it. But it is topping on Netflix at number one. So, um, what's that about? Because it looks, uh, so it looks like a hardened mis- <laughs> mercenary's mission becomes a soul-searching race to survive. When he sent into Bangladesh to rescue a drug lord's kidnapped son. Alrighty then. I mean. And I did see a couple of things of, like, this, he said that this film for him was probably one of the hardest one action-wise, because I guess the director, did you hear that? What is that? That was a car. That was loud as fuck. That was a low-riding Honda Civic from 1992. You don't even have to know, to see it, to know it. (laughs) Exactly, my point. I mean, Um, it it looks decent. <clears throat> no, my cousin told me that it was. He's like, that is that was probably one of the dopest things I've ever seen. But um, look at, can you I see the veins popping, girl? Please, you're gonna point that shit out to me. I've already like mentally palpated 
got all up in there. So oh my, um, I actually thought about that last night because the scribe and I were cuddling while watching Waco, Texas, and my hand was on his arm and he he had a vein popping, and I just fucking rolled that shit under my thumb for like hours. <laughs> Because all I could think was you and I was like, this vein, yo, this vein. <laughs> right there. Right there. I got one. Yep. That's a good one. I have them on my hands. Um, Go ahead. So <laughs> he, he said that it was one of the most challenging ones action wise, which fucking threw me off because this is Chris Hemsworth. Uh, yeah. He is Thor. Mm -hmm. But the director liked, he loved to do, um, like a minute action scene mm -hmm. he would do them in one shot mm. so it would be like tucking rolling shooting getting smacked him onto the next and it's just like for, like in one shot he wanted it wow. so it was t that type of shit um i feel like i have something else to tell you for fuck sake wait she is all over the place right now what are you Hold trying on. to tell me is peaky blinders out the new season? No, that came out a while ago. Okay. I'm thinking of... You're not thinking of Peaky. And I still have yet to watch that fucking new season. God. All right, so I know V Wars was canceled after season one. That's Ian Somerhalder's vampire series. Oh, yeah. Bro, he put out a live video. He was so depressed. He, I'm pretty sure he was drunk when he put that out. It was very sketchy. I was just like, oh my god, Ian, stop, stop, stop. It was embarrassing to watch. Poor boy. Um, so that was canceled after one season. Not a great loss, to be quite honest. Yeah. Extraction, I heard, was good. The Last Kingdom, I know you've not seen it. It's about Vikings. But the new season, I think, airs May... It just says coming Sunday. Season four, coming on Sunday. This is a long been waiting. We've all been waiting, except for you. You don't wait. Um. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I watched yesterday with Javi a 15-minute IG story of John Beatty, who played uh, Yaskier on The Witcher. Oh, yeah. Reading, like, The Witcher book. And it was honestly the most soothing thing I've ever watched in my life. I was like, why is this relaxing Be so... He was just so good at it. It was great. I will have to look that up. I will find it for you. Um, oh God. I feel like our two watch list is just going to keep growing and growing and growing. And and I get mad when people are like, recommendations, I've got nothing to watch. I'm like, bro, just work your way down the fucking list. Yeah, seriously. At this point, like, what are you even waiting for? Um, fuck me. I thought there was something else. I, I don't know why I thought it was Peaky Blinders. Fucking love that show. So fucking good. The original Ninja Turtles is on Netflix. They added what's new Scooby-Doo, too, I saw. But it's not the old one. It's the newer kind of one. So it's okay. not that good. Nice. Uh, I did not watch episode two of In the Dark. Oh, I did. Casey came back and he was gorgeous. Sorry. He still has long hair, right? He never had long hair. What's wrong with no, you? No, like his, because at some point in that se in season two, he comes back with shaved head. No, he didn't have a shaved head. Okay. I can't think of what it is that I wanted to say, and I know that I'm going to be mad at myself later. Yeah, it's going to pop in your head as you're fucking sleeping. Probably, and it's going to wake me from a dead sleep. Oh, Outer Banks. Oh, yeah. How do you, f I mean, I've only seen the trailer, which, gotta say, it, it grabbed me by one nut, not both nuts, but it grabbed me by one. Can you remind me what it's about again, because, uh, it's like one of those. Of he ha <laughs> Can you speak? No. On the island of haves and have-nots, Team John B. enlists his three best friends to hunt for a legendary treasure linked to his father's disappearance. So it's very much, it has a dynamic of like, you're either rich or you're working for the rich. Okay. This is right. Yeah. So, and it's got that very, um, it's very, 
I don't know. It's like really rich people and then people who live out in like the bayou type of but it has it has like very surfer esque feel to it too, which is fucking crazy because there's no Yeah. No surf. It's outer banks for a reason. No surfing, it's just treasure. Yeah, it's like treasure hunting, deep diving a movie type of or shit. No? Uh, it looks like it's a series. Um, there's ten episodes in season one, and it is shit. brand spanking new teen TV shows, TV drama. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, JD Pardo is in this. Have you ever seen The Messengers? No. From 2015? You know, I had started to watch something, and it was like episode one, I was like, no. Oh, (laughs) October Faction. No? No. You know what it is. Yes, you do. Here, let me, let me show you. He's, uh, he's this one right here. Oh my god. Sorry. It's this one here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I put up episode one. I'll tell you exactly how far into episode one. Oh, my God. It doesn't even, like, mark it. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not doing this. Not good? I don't know. I just wasn't feeling it. It was, uh, yeah. Yeah. Me. Yeah. But at least uh, y'all got some good ones that you can weed out from all that bullshit. For yeah, sure. Have you ever seen Swiss Army Man? No, but I wanted to because that's a Daniel, right? It's on Netflix. It is? Mm-hmm. I might watch it then. I didn't even know I just, that. I didn't see I it. Just, yeah, I just added it to my list. Um, Ash vs. Evil Dead is on there. Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. Yep. Tau is a great fucking movie. I keep hearing that. Tau, T-A-U, is a great fucking movie. I'm telling you. you. That one and what happened to Monday. Oh, yes. We talked about that on a previous episode. We had? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. So, y'all got some shit to do. (laughs) Amanda's got a lot of shit to do. I do, too. But I really want to, um, I want to catch, I want to catch up to defending Jacob. And then I think what I'm going to do, people keep telling me to watch Miracle in Cell 7. It's a Turkish movie. Yeah, I know what it, uh, you're talking about. Yeah, so I might do that, but I might just rewatch something that I've already seen. I'm, this week, I'm going to finish Waco, and I definitely want to start watching Defending Jacob. So. Oh, God, it's so good already. That's going to be my... But two main for a bit. Sweet. I'll um I'll sift through Netflix and everything else. So and I'll send you my login. Please do. And is of course. And um as always, stay safe. Y'all be happy. Try to entertain yourself. There's puzzles, coloring books, all that shit. I don't fucking know. Do you know I miss coloring? <laughs> is that I sad? actually I downloaded an, a coloring app onto my iPad. No, that's bull. You need the paper, the crayon. Or well, then you pencil. should be here because we have a shit ton. Kira loves to color, so. I showed you her Superman thing, right? Yeah. She's what the fuck? five almost? Yeah. She was that in was her good. lines. She colors better than I do. Uh, yeah, I know. I said, she's like even got the skin tone down. Yeah. I was like, the fuck is this? Savant, I told Javi, that is. Yeah, I told Javi, I was like, you're lying to me. You did that. He goes, Joma, I helped her color in the blue. But he's like, I wasn't even sure what the color scheme for the symbol was. And she fucking knew it. That's how you know you're raising your children, right? Ayo. Ayo. All right, guys. I'm ready to peace out. I'm tired. Me too. Dead tired. Uh, I mean, I'm not tired. You're tired. You have coffee? All right. Bye, y'all. Peace out, guys.